Deadpool X-Force and Yondu buffs. That's what, what we're going to go over in this video. I should have time coded it. There's usually like a thing you can click between each different champion. And that's what we're going to do. So you can in a video go from one to the other. We're going to be going over first Deadpool X-Force. Now there's not much of abilities for Deadpool X-Force. You do a Dinium Poke, which is, uh, well, it, it does bleed damage. It's a thing. It's its awakened ability. But also we have got, uh, well, um, just a passive, dropping below 30% health grants a burst of power, which we've seen in the past. SP2 is all about inflicting bleed. SP3, all about doing bleed damage. And that's it. So um, they've got a bit of work to do to kind of expand out and kind of showcase what this champion does. So we've got the info right here on screen. As I said, it's on the uh, forums if you want to go and check it out in the spotlight. And Deadpool x force exceeds at berating the opponent with insults during the fight, inflicting taunt debuffs. So taunt debuffs are a new thing added to the champion to do. Taunt is a very weird thing at the moment in game because AI in certain different areas, that depending on its AI profile and its difficulty curve and its coding, and coding for that particular profile of the champion, can mean that it's not particularly great when trying to get an enemy champion to throw a special attack and that's a current problem in the game a command will probably say no it's not a problem it is it really is one of the base things is vicious now we'll see about what vicious is in a moment but it looks like there's going to be some more rank ramp ups to uh, maximizing duodenium poke which again bleed damage is key with this champion i expect deep wounds to be so much of a uh, thing looks like weakness is going to be bleed immunity Makes perfect sense. And some of the strength, as said, bleed damage. Duodenium poke alongside his SP1. Um, his super slap can apply massive amounts of bleed damage. So bleed is key with this champion. And that is, uh, that's good to see that Kamam have got that. But what is else, go what is else going on? What else is going on, if I can use my English? So if you uh, do a heavy attack, you inflict a bleed. Uh, you inflict a taunt debuff. So again, handy for certain interactions, and Deadpool can inflict taunt debuffs on the opponent, reducing the opponent's attack rating by 25% for 13 seconds with a max stack of 3. And on all attacks, it looks like the signature ability has been somewhat taken out. Uh, so yeah, Duodenium Poke becomes part of the scene. You do no, you no longer need to awaken the champion to get Duodenium Poke. It comes as standard with the champion, which is very, very nice. So 100% chance to inflict a bleed debuff causing 1,229 direct damage over 4 seconds. Again, very nice. I love it. Super slap on a heavy attack. So this, I don't know if this is a new animation similar to like Doctor Doom. And um, that's going to be cool. Deadpool, uh, Deadpool builds up an in, indefinite slap charge to a max of 10. This is cool because this means it's fun. It's very much about Deadpool. It's very fun. Very cool. Deadpool can expend them during heavy attacks to unleash a super slap inflicting 10 stacks of du duodenium poke bleed so build up those those slap charges and slap away i love it i think that's that's a lot of fun that's really cool i'm really looking forward to seeing this champion in action when we get the update on um, early next week really looking forward to it uh, I haven't been looking forward to a champion buff in a long time. And this one's going to be um, a fun one. Except for Storm was cool. I mean, look, they've all been cool. It's just I think that this one's going to be fun because it's Deadpool. And Deadpool's all, all meant to be about is fun. If the opponent has a taunt debuff on an SP1, you do um, uh, during stack. Duodenium poke does not have a cooldown. Death by a thousand pokes. So, okay. Uh, in short to fight, spam heavy attacks and special ones to stack tons of bleeds on the opponent. Again, makes sense. This is Deadpool's favorite uh, favorite attack on SP2. While fighting as a defender, he is 100% more likely to use it over other special attacks. Really, AI profile being tuned to throw special attacks? This uh, that's, that's not very kabam. That's very not very kabam. But uh, it's good to see that there's kind of like a little bit of uh, improvement to interaction. Each hit uh, that is blocked inflicts a taunt debuff. If Deadpool successfully lands all of his hits during that attack is 100 chance to stun a stun passive for 3.5 seconds we love a stun passive who doesn't love a stun passive an sp3 100 chance to get a vicious buff increasing the potency of damage over time debuffs by 75 percent for 25 seconds nice sp3 rotations are the key and the dev note is make sure you've got a super slap in the bank before the sp3 and get some huge bleed damage love that that pointer there i think that's uh, that's brilliant love it Signature ability, this is the most crucial thing. Each time the opponent purifies a taunt debuff 
where a taunt debuff on the opponent is replaced due to a hitting hitting the max stacks. Deadpool gains a power gain buff, granting 0.5 seconds of power over 5 seconds. That can be very good to rotate around, oh, as, as I was about to say there, uh, SP3s. So yeah, um, spam a ton of SP1s with, a, with some extra power gain for the Merc with a mouth. Uh, I'll race to an SP3. I think I like the race to an SP3 type thing. Depending on what you know, what you're, who you're going up against. If you go up against Karnak, which would shrug off because it's a, a, a debuff, Crossbones, Misty Knights, and such like, it's great. Power, uh, not power, um, class advantage and stuff like that. Love it. Okay, and the signature abilities, not much going on. A bit disappointed with that the signature abilities, but I guess they want to make him just like a standout champion in his own right. But it is what it is. What else? Well, uh, Deep Wounds and Petrify and Pacify are the um, recommended masteries. Deep Wounds, uh, I think, for sure. And I've got Deep Wounds on five, so I'm looking forward to testing out this champion next week. Looks impressive. I'm, I've got to be honest. It looks really, really cool. The Merc with a Mouth, Depo X-Force, the Scourge of the Pools in Marvel Contest is looking like it's going to get a very tasty little buff. Thoughts on that one? Now let's move on to Yondu. Let's now go into part two of this video and focus on Yondu's buffs. Yondu has a very kind of complex kit of helpful things for you, whether or not he's doing block penetration based damage, he's got heal block on, armor break and bleed. How is the change and what is the change going to affect with this champion? Well, it is going to affect the champion and it's not. It's got some, some kind of like increased uh, utility to a degree, but retains a lot of the similar things that the champion uh, was kind of known for. But the potency, I think, is another thing to kind of like bring into question. So one of the things that seems to be a, uh, a, a staple or keeping the same are certain things around his offensive ability accuracy uh, reduction stuff and his heavy, so his heavy attack and also the always active elements. So on all attacks, generate 10% less power if the target is suffering from a debuff effect up to a max of 50%. That still retains the same thing there with the heavy attack and the uh, all, always active. So they're 50%, you know, that percentage right there. So that's fine. Where the champion gets some kind of like additions and improvements really comes with the uh, the damage that can be done with the bleed damage. The bleed damage has been given more of a, an opportunity to come to light. And also that block penetration seems to be more of a key thing. If you go up against nodes like uh, Invade, for example, I think it's Invade, where it rewards players for hitting into the block more damage. So that kind of like be can can be like a main main thing to look out for. The same with Massacre, it's used for a similar uh, node-based interaction. So this hopefully with a damage improvement could be another option to take on the champion also looks to on the new kind of changes have interactions with champions that are mutant based removing things like prowess that builds up which is great that means that if you're going i need a counter for any mutant champion like uh storm storm pyramid x uh, apocalypse um who's got a lot of genetic code and also professor x and kitty pride and jubilee uh, to name but a few then you have that particular you know suppression of it i think there's also a node that you interact with i think in act seven i might have faced it once where every two seconds the enemy champion gets a prowess uh, buff so i don't know if that would be handy to suppress in these particular examples but then there's other things uh, to this that meets um, meets in the middle. Some slight improvements to the extent of, I think, how armor break is. Because armor breaking game is not that potent. So I think that's been buffed right there. Uh, I also think that, well, I mean, let's face it. The champion's not going to be great against champions like Karnak and others that purify debuffs. Because you need those, purif you need those debuffs on the enemy in order to be... Um, uh, you know more potent for suppressing power on the enemy so those kind of like key things uh right there but it's certainly nice to know that some element of improvement has been made to the champion to make him a little more potent uh especially with the first and third light attacks as well as during his heavy and special attacks you can get um you can have armor and block penetration and also you can pilfer armor up buffs which is which is nice. That's helpful enough. That can give a uh, different option to different content, a uh, different you know champion to interact, and be a counter for what you see fit. Now, on the face of it, it doesn't look like there's that many uh, changes. There's an increase in the duration of the the heal block debuff to suppress you know regeneration. Where before it was 100% chance to heal block for 10 seconds if the target is regenerating, inflict heal block for 20 seconds. Now it's a case that with that SP1, that 
100% chance to inflict the heal, the heal block debuff, and if the opponent is regenerating, 25%. So there's a slight buff to that by 5 seconds. But also, uh, SP2, what is on the SP2? This is all about the block penetration as well. And it looks to be similar, not 100% sure on that, but uh, it looks to be similar than it is in game. And what else have we got? For each special attack the opponent has launched this fight, gain a passive fury granting 7672, 6972 attack rating for 14 seconds, max 12. So 12 special attacks being thrown that you need for the enemy. Uh, developer note uh, on this says that uh, this is Yondu's main damage spike and gets better as the fight goes on. And and yeah, like at the moment, uh, how it is with in game is attack for each special attack activated by, by this fight, uh, max 15. So there's a boost with that, but also the attack is plus 103.8. Now, because this is now a Fury passive, you'll get to see it visually in action, which I think is very important so, so players can go, look, we get it, we're actually doing damage, or we're got something that's allowing us to do damage in a moment, which I think is going to be very important for you to kind of feel that this champion has been buffed a little bit. But I think it's going to need some some real testing out as to its interaction and whether or not, you know, I think these two buffs are very much non-suicide friendly. No, they are, yeah, they're very, very much non-suicide mastery friendly, which is a bit disappointing. But uh, that's the, that's the thing. Sometimes some some months good, some sometimes not so much. Unless you rotate around SP3s, that's the other thing as well. Uh, if you want to use the basic kit of rotating around SP2s, then there here there there comes a problem, doesn't it? So on the SP3 side of things. Then you've got 100% uh, chance to gain a precision fury, a precision buff, sorry, increasing critical rating. Nice, 100% chance to inflict an indefinite, non second passive, special concussion, reducing ability actually during special attacks. Um, okay, that's fine. I guess the precision is probably going to be the most interesting thing for the rotation. No synergies that are any potent as well. I find that very kind of weird. Um, I find that very strange. But going back to the SP2 situation and just to go over what the dev note is, this is Yondu's main damage spike and gets better as the fight goes longer. Don't be afraid to bait more SP1s over SP2s from the opponent to get more passive furies quicker. So SP2s to look out for. Um, and that seems to be how this champion is, um, yeah, like kind of operating for. And that's just the thing. It says here special attack, um, for each special attack the opponent has launched in this fight. And, um, yeah, so that's what you got to do. Wait for loads of SP once to be thrown. Get out of there. SP2 them to, to heck and back. And you do, do some damage rotations. Can you get an SP3 uh, in time uh, to then kind of go, okay, well, we'll do... They throw a load of special attacks in this fight. So they've thrown up to uh, 12, which is the number we're going off against. Then you throw your SP3 the, for the precision, for the crits. And then you go and ramp up an SP2 within 20 seconds. And throw a load of damage. I mean, that may be how you want to play it, but it's going to be down to you. And there we go. That has been a little coverage of both Yondu and as well on to that lovely Deadpool X-Force buff. What is everybody's thoughts on these particular champions? I'm interested in Deadpool X-Force 1. I've got to be honest, it, it, looks, it looks quite good on paper, but we've been here before. On paper, things are good. And they turn out to be not so good. But we'll see. Thoughts in the comment section. Thoughts on the synergies not getting much of a look in. I don't get what's going on with that. But it is what it is with this subject. Thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure as well to check out some other content. Boom. Located on screen right now. And I'll um, be doing lots more content on the new June events. We'll be doing a little coverage at the start of the week for the update and some of the buffs. And then we'll be getting into the content on Wednesday. Uh, to, uh, to kind of see, you know, how the side quest works, the objectives and all that other stuff as well. See you in many videos. Cheers, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye.